a genuinely market-oriented aircraft was developed in the USSR at one time. This happened in 1966, and the plane in question was known as the Yak-40. The aircraft was highly successful during its era, as it introduced numerous aviation innovations and served as a jet shuttle that connected small villages and cities with regional centers throughout the USSR. Nevertheless, the Yak-40 became obsolete by the late 1970s, and its demand diminished with the emergence of the new market economy. It appeared that the story of this aircraft was ending. However, in 2019, a new Yak-40DT was introduced, which was re-engineered, outfitted with modern electronics, and featured a distinctive composite wing. The Yak-40's primary issue, poor fuel efficiency, was resolved by this upgrade, and the new avionics considerably enhanced flight safety. Consequently, the plane's weight was decreased, thereby eliminating the necessity for three engines. Additionally, fuel consumption decreased from 1,150 kg per hour to 560 to 590 kg per hour. It is important to note that the Yak-40 DT modification did not involve the development of a new aircraft, but rather the drastic modernization of 420 existing Yak-40s that had been stored. The airframe life of the retired planes would enable for an additional 15 to 20 years of service, with these serving as donors for the project. Nevertheless, the aircraft has not yet entered serial production, and it has been nearly six years since the first flight. The composite prototype has not been flown in any further flights, and the website of Sibnaya, the organization that developed the aircraft, now contains information regarding its closure. Consequently, they tried to achieve the highest possible outcome. However, the outcome was as anticipated. The causes of this latest failure are straightforward. Initially, there has been no successful serial production of a single ambitious Russian aviation or high-tech initiative in the past decade. Secondly, the development and deployment of a composite airframe or wings are not particularly challenging. Even well-known aircraft manufacturers encounter difficulties in guaranteeing the durability of these components. This is the reason why only Boeing and Airbus mass-produce aircraft with black wings, and they also meticulously monitor the lifespan of composite components throughout their operational existence. Finally, it was clear that certain components of the new aircraft were of foreign origin. This includes critical components such as the power unit, avionics, and composite materials. It goes without saying that the current circumstances render the production of such an aircraft nearly impossible without substantial financial investments. This is the case with the MC-21 project, in which Russia is acquiring the ability to manufacture all components of the aircraft's structure including the composite wing and engines. There is another reason. Even in more favorable times, the Yak-40DT lost the competitive battle to the Czech Republic. Let L-410, Turbolet, which was supposed to enter serial production in Russia as an already established and time-tested plane. Hence, the Yak-40DT should be viewed as a flying testbed for technologies that may someday actually enter production. Now, do you think the Yak-40DT situation is a familiar story of most Russian projects after the fall of the Soviet Union? Let us know in the comments. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please also take our membership to encourage us.